Hi Fidelity Scholars, my name is Jared Keller. I'm a mental health advocate and I work with the Steve Fund, the nation's leading mental health organization for young people of color. Today I'm here to talk to you about the stigma surrounding mental health in communities of color. I know from my own personal experiences how much discrimination and systemic inequalities can really mess with your mental health. It's a lot, so it's important to talk about these things. Now don't get me wrong, I understand that the stigma surrounding mental health and lack of access to a therapist who understands you, your culture, and your background can be huge hurdles in properly supporting your mental health. But even with all that, we owe it to ourselves to try. The conversation around mental health will never be normalized if we don't talk about it, if we don't go to therapy, or share our stories. We have to work together to support those within our communities who are struggling with their mental health. And we can do that by advocating for change and challenging stigmas, creating safe spaces for people to talk about their mental health struggles, and promoting mental health awareness and education. Now I'm going to pass it over to Malik to talk about his experiences with mental health. Jared, thank you, thank you for that beautiful introduction. My name is Malik Tiam. I'm a senior at Middlebury College, and I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York. One of the things that people struggle the most with in college is loneliness. There's tons of research that talks about a loneliness epidemic, but the thing about college loneliness is you are surrounded by people often 24 seven and you can still feel lonely. For me, there are two things that I strongly recommend everybody focuses on during their first few years of college in order to ensure that they have a healthy relationship with mental health. That is working on your support network. Building this support network will not only be great for seeking great experiences and making a lifetime of memories, but these people are also those you will turn to when you are having a tougher experience with mental health. The second thing I would strongly advise everybody to do is maintain an active lifestyle in college. Personally, I've invested much of my time into running and into cycling. They've both become a different form of meditation that helps me check in with myself, spend time with my thoughts, and really, really reap all of the benefits that exercising has on your mental health. The stigma around mental health is also something that is dwindling. As I've grown into a senior at college, most of my friends talk openly about it, and the strongest relationships I have are with people who are unafraid to talk about these things. So if you take anything away from this video, it's that maintaining a strong support network and an active lifestyle are the best things you can do for your mental health at college. Your GPA, your extracurriculars, your internships, those will all fall into place, but make sure that you invest a good amount of time and energy into the first two. College is incredible. Now let me pass it back to Jared. Thanks, Malik. Now before I let you go, remember that in order for us to promote mental well-being in our communities, we have to practice self-care, get help when we need it, and utilize resources to properly take care of our mental health. And you can do it. You got this? And if you need help, you can go to the Steve Fund website or text Steve in the slide coming up next. Bye, guys. <laughs>